Welcome to Savvy Business, Life Unscripted with your host, Christina Rivera, where our guests share their wisdom and valuable business tips, empowering our audience to expand their personal potential. Hello, Kevin Dubois. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted. We're so grateful to have you here today. How are you? I am great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Oh, you betcha. You've done some wonderful work out here. We're going to have an interesting conversation. We've never had anyone on in the laundry dry cleaning services arena. You're at LaPel's dry cleaning stores. You're a franchise, fran- how do you say it? Franchise system. Yes. Yeah, franchise. Fran- and we are the franchisor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that is a great business. Right now we talked before the interview how there are so many businesses hurting, brick and mortar businesses. What was interesting though about a lot of the brick and mortar businesses, even in our area in Brooklyn, Bay Ridge, New York, is they had to pivot. And one spa treatment place I told you in our neighborhood immediately could not service people. They could not come in and have spa treatments, but they immediately pivoted online, offered coaching and skincare, you know, videos and such, really trying to offer as much value to their clients, keep front of mind. And that's something you have done with all of your franchisees and your stores and and pivoted to to serve the client. Share how you've done that in this time of, of crisis. Yeah, I mean, small business owners are amazing. They will continue to pivot and survive like uh, nobody else. They're, they're very impressive. In our system, uh, we're somewhat fortunate in that we are an essential service, uh, garment uh, and laundry cleaning. Um, and so we are able to open. And at first, when this all started to unfold live, we thought, geez, isn't that great? And then we slowly realized, well, geez, nobody's coming out. (laughs) And so although we can keep the stores open, there aren't a whole lot of people coming in. And that started to increase over the last few days. Mm -hmm. It, It does seem like there's more people out and about. But the way we pivoted is we really went from a retail brick and mortar to uh, delivery services. Um, and in some of our stores, we already had that, that arm up and running. And in mm-hmm. others, we had franchise owners that were renting vehicles, putting slick rail in them and, and putting people in those trucks. Mm-hmm. And I would say pickup and delivery has gone from what was probably about a 30% part of our business to now what is probably a 70 to 80% portion of our business. Wow. And I think that's the the key for any business owners out there, whether you're online more or brick and mortar, is to pivot and, and cross correct just slightly sometimes just to give your clients what they need right now. Um, because yeah. this might not be going forward forever. Maybe, you know, people want to come more into the store and do it themselves in, in a little bit later time. But the fact yeah. that you were able to pivot and give um, the customer base what they needed um, is awesome. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we, uh, we continue to do that. So we started, you know, with pickup and delivery. And then we had a franchise owner in New Jersey who said, Hey, I'm going to do this comforter deal. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to clean comforters for 19 bucks. All you can, you know, all you can give uh, your driver. And he had hundreds of comforters come in in that can very first day. Please come to my day. neighborhood, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, would love to. <laughs> and so yeah. we then share that across the system. We're doing daily calls with them just to share good ideas in terms of operations and all of the things going on with the payroll protection loans and the idle right. loans. And so, yeah, we continue to to pivot and then repivot almost daily right now. Mm. And then I think really what everyone needs to do, regardless of where you are, I recall this was n- not now during the time we're dealing with COVID, but it was a couple of years ago. I had worked for a company where a number of people had been there 20, 30 years at this company were laid off. They had a change of management and one gal was just frantic. She's like, I've done this for 30 years. I don't know what else to do. And sure. so, you know, she had always been in her kitchen making these soups and she loved making them and her family loved them. And you know what? It turned into a business. And sometimes oh, wow. that thing you don't pay attention to, that thing you're good at, she started yeah. just serving them to neighbors or so awesome. I buy it from you. And she <laughs> pivoted and made it into a business. And, you know, things like that yeah. happen all the time. So uh, yeah. what turns into a misfortune or disaster could turn into your greatest gift later on if you kind of look at it from different lenses and shift a little bit. 
Yeah, there's always a silver lining somewhere. And for us, I think, I think the pickup and delivery, there were a lot of our franchise owners that had thought about doing it, but, but really needed a little push. And this was certainly that push that got them there. Yeah. Uh, and I think as the world comes back online, I think that will be a great benefit for our system as a whole. And, and all these people that have pivoted, you know, for us, the garments that are coming in, are, are very different you know those suits are now bedspreads and so I think as we you know come back online I think that will be something that we'll we'll put in our tool belt and learn from and that'll be messaging that we'll continue to run with when we're getting the suits we'll hope to still get the bedspreads yeah yeah I love that you mentioned that because I, I was talking to a couple of my friends who still are working but they're working from home so she's like sure. yeah I'm in my pajamas in front of my computer they're not getting <laughs> in their suits anymore because no one sees me um, yeah. yeah but you've been in this business for a long time you wrote a book called entrepreneurial insanity in the dry cleaning business I love the name uh, yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> what brought you for one into the whole industry and then eventually to write your book yeah, definitely. So, you know, the dry cleaning industry was kind of a, a unique scenario for me. I grew up in the restaurant business. My, my family owned and operated restaurants. Um, I, I worked in my father's restaurant. He had a small diner down Cape Cod. He had a very large catering company. Um, as a, at a very young age, I opened my first restaurant, kind of following in his footsteps, 19 years old, had my first restaurant. I built that to six restaurants at age 21. And my introduction to lapels and dry cleaning was buying a restaurant from the founder of lapels dry cleaning. Um, he was very much in the dry cleaning industry, knew it. I had been in franchising through the hotels that I was now starting to lease restaurants from. So I understood the franchising piece and he and I got along really well, uh, was really a mentor for me in the dry cleaning space. I learned a lot from him about dry cleaning. We shared, uh, you know, learning skills on the franchising arm. And so that's really what got me into dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I was really drawn to the business model because it was very different than the restaurant world that restaurants had a, a million moving pieces and you had perishable goods and cost of goods was always a struggle. Mm -hmm. And the dry cleaning industry was the exact opposite. The business model was very straightforward. The cost of goods was very low. You weren't throwing things away. Uh, so I really gravitated uh, towards that business and I liked it. I bought 50% of the company from him after we did that transaction. I then sold the restaurants and about 10 years ago, I bought him out of the other half. He was a little older than I and he was happy to, to retire. That's worked out really well for the two of us. And that was, that was my bridge into the dry cleaning space. And it's really kind of, you know, my job is 50-50. It's dry cleaning. We, we own and operate five stores within the system. And then as franchisor to bring new people into the system and train them and educate them in the ongoing consultation and marketing with them. You know, this is fascinating because there might be some folks out there who are like, I always wanted a brick and mortar, but getting started from the ground up could be a little scary thing to do but a franchisee if you join then you're yeah. not in it alone you're in it with a, a community yeah definitely i mean when we've seen this with everything going on in the world now um you know for us we don't have to come up with great ideas every day as the franchisor we just have to be good at getting those good ideas across the system and so it's not like uh you know a mom and pop cleaner that's struggling to try and figure out all the nuances we're we're a collective family sharing those good resources but yeah i mean we've got a business model that we started in 1999 that is a rinse and repeat you know we we uh, we bring you into the system and we train you on all the years of mistakes that we made on our dime <laughs> and uh, and really kind of get you going in the business and most of the people in our business had well almost all of them had no dry cleaning experience whatsoever you know they're coming from a, a, a career in corporate America that they were successful in but wanted to own their own business Wow so what is the biggest lesson someone could take if they were going to start with you today and open their own dry cleaner what is something that most people don't know about running or being in a dry cleaning franchisee well I think a, yeah, a lot of the people that come into our system come from big business uh, where they're sort of a cog in the wheel 
and I think the, the biggest nuance or the biggest learning curve for them is, uh, you know, sometimes your chief cook and bottle washer in a small business, you know, they are the marketing department, they are human resources, and they're working with uh, frontline employees where there's some psychology that goes on there. Um, that, that's probably, you know, the biggest takeaway. Uh, in terms of the industry as a whole, I think a lot of people are surprised uh, at, you know, how simple the business is. I think from the customer's perspective, it looks like there's a lot of machinery and it looks uh, very convoluted. Mm -hmm. um, and we've really kind of made that system very analytical. Um, you know, we, we track the pieces that are clean per operator hour per day per week and we coach them on, on how that all works. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And one of the things I get from myself going into any store that might service, uh, do services with is the fact that they offer me friendly, good service where, you know, they're very attentive, even going to the dry cleaners. So I've been using the same one now for about <laughs> eight, 10 years. And yeah, I hear that, that a lot. It's great. a real relationship. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. It, it's kind of like the person that, that cuts your hair. You know, you do build this relationship. You become very loyal to them. Um, and that's, that's really what, from the front lines in our business, we're building relationships. Yeah. And I think that's the biggest takeaway that I think any business owner listening in today can take away is uh, putting the, the customers first and uh, building the relationship. I, I think it's probably something that can be down the line. Kevin, it, it, you know, you've offered so much value device here. If someone wants to get to, to get started today and say they're just excited to start their own small business, and this is sounding like something up their alley, how would they get yeah. started with you today? You know, the easiest way to do it is to go to lapelsfranchise.com. Um, and, you know, there's contact information on our website as well as videos and, and uh, an ebook actually is there. Um, that's probably the easiest first step where they can call 866-MY-LAPELS. Uh, our, our uh, Michael Eisner runs our franchise development. He was our very first franchise owner, was the first franchisee in the system in 1999. Mm -hmm. And so he uh, understands, you know, what people are initially going through and is a great first resource to learn more about our system. Mm. And for any business owner out there from top to bottom, what would be your advice at this time as we go through this kind of transitionary period? Yeah, with everything going on in the world, I think it's, uh, you know, small business owners are, uh, are tremendous uh, at, at pivoting and surviving. I think it's just stay positive, keep your head up, understand we're all in this together. Everybody's going through the same challenges. Uh, I really feel like this will be a, a short term challenge. And uh, I think it'll be, uh, it'll be back to business here very soon. And, and we'll all get through it together. Yeah, I love that, Kevin. It's so true. We will get through this very soon. And I think sure. we're going to explode. I think businesses and people will do very well the rest of the yeah. year and going forward. Uh, it's going to be great for us. So I, I thank you so much, uh, Kevin. Yeah, my um, pleasure. Yeah, I love it. And everyone, please go to lapelsdryclining.com. Get the book. Find out more. If you've had that passion to want to start your own small business, you don't have it to do it alone. There's a community out there to help you do it. Thank you so much, Kevin, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You betcha. If you like this episode, please share. To hear more Savvy episodes and Savvy Biz Tips, go to lifeunscriptedradio.com. To become a guest or participate in paid sponsorship, email us at christinalifeunscriptedradio.com.